Hello and welcome to Community Chats. I'm your host, Ali Hammer, and today we're joined with Peter, the CEO and co-founder of Secure Code Warrior. Peter, thank you so much for joining me today. Can you start by telling our audience a little bit about Secure Code Warrior? Well, thank you very much for inviting me as well. Now, I, I did want to talk a little bit about what's happening with software around the world, right? Because at the moment, I think software is really eating our economy. It is infiltrating our personal lives. Like if you look around in your house, uh, your fridges, your coffee machines, your cars, everything nowadays kind of runs on, on software. And of course, security and securing that software becomes really, really important because we see every almost every day, we see a data breach happening in the newspaper from a big corporation. Um, and what we're really trying to do with Secure Code Warrior is helping the people that are building all that beautiful software and helping them uh, make them more aware about some of the security mistakes that you can make in software and how to actually uh, avoid those mistakes while they're kind of writing code. So uh, basically we're trying to help the builders to become better builders and more secure builders. So when they produce software, um, that we can basically be sure that the software has been written in a way that it cannot be hacked, cannot be the root cause of, uh, of a data breach. It's crazy how many cyber attacks occur daily. So I'm really glad to hear that you guys have a solution to help these customers. And Peter, here at AWS, security is job zero for us. So do you guys share a similar motto? Yeah, so for us, security is like built into the DNA of everyone in the company. Um, and, and that comes down from the CEO, like myself, who's been grown up for about 20 years in cybersecurity. So for me, security, it's like, it's like brushing your teeth. It's something that you do every single day. It needs to be on top of your mind. It needs to be automatic and built in, whether you're working in sales or in marketing or in product or engineering. Um, it is really a requirement that you take care of the customer's data and the data that we're kind of processing and, uh, and making sure that it becomes part of your daily routine. So um, it's not like security is the responsibility of a certain people sitting in a basement somewhere and it's like the security team that needs to solve it. No, we're, we're all responsible for uh, making sure that the customer's data is, uh, is, is kind of secure. And I think I, I would say it's very similar than, than driving on the road uh, with a car right like it's it's everyone's responsibility to make sure that you drive safely on the road and it doesn't mean that no accidents will ever happen but at least like every driver needs to be in the car they need to understand the basic rules around safe driving and i think in my opinion it's the same around security and secure coding um, it's everyone's responsibility to kind of keep it top of mind it's really great to hear. And Peter, what are the common pitfalls that you guys see that customers are often making? And how, do you have any advice for you know, navigating this journey to the cloud? Well, um, if, if I look at our own organization, like we, we started in day one uh, um, and, and we, we, we basically said that we're gonna be, everything is gonna be cloud. So we're not gonna have anything on-prem from day one when we basically built this company, everything is gonna be cloud-based. Um, and, and many customers are kind of moving to the cloud, right? Like they're, they're moving their sales processes to Salesforce. They're moving, moving all their finances to companies like, like Zero. So everything kind of ends up in the cloud. And I think the, the, uh, the assumption or the pitfall that you could make is assuming that, oh, because we're not hosting the system anymore, we're not responsible anymore for the systems, security will be taken care of automatically. So we just write the code, we deploy it with the cloud provider, we or we use SaaS services, and we kind of assume that uh, that cloud provider or the way on how we deploy the code is kind of secured by default. Which of course we all know it's it, it's not. Uh, it's still it's still your data that you are storing uh, with SaaS providers, and it's your data or your code that is running in somebody else's infrastructure system. So you do need to think about the implications from uh, from a security perspective. Um, and I think that those are some of the common pitfalls that customers sometimes make, thinking like, oh, let's just drop in the cloud and it, it'll be secure by default. Yeah, that's some really good advice and so true. You know, you have to be so careful when you're, when you're protecting your data. So Peter, what is the most important factor to you in a cloud provider? And we are really happy for you here to give us some very honest feedback. So I think the reason why we, we went for uh, cloud from, from kind of day one is because it's, it's A, it's cutting edge technology um, and it's there as a service. Like we don't need to build everything ourselves. It was just you might, with, with the, the ease of management, the ease of use, just a few clicks, 
and woof, you've got you've got load balance up and running, you've got virtual containers up and running, you've got databases all kind of running. So the ease of use was makes work more efficient, more easier and faster because we could really focus on building a core product rather than kind of maintaining a, a whole bunch of infrastructure and systems and processes and so on. Um, this, the second one, which I think apart from ease of use for us is um, the ability to support our customers' needs. Um, because we have customers in Europe that kind of saying, hey, you, we really want you to store our data in Europe. Or we have customers in the US that says, my data cannot leave the US or cannot leave these kind of premises. And I think with cloud providers, the fact that you can choose to host in Frankfurt or in Oregon or in Singapore or in clouds that are specific for government, I think that makes it all much easier for us because now we don't need to build that infrastructure. We don't need to go out and set everything up because it's it's already there as a, as a, as a service. Uh, the third one is probably cost. Um, I do think um, having a usage-based model like saved us a lot of costs initially, um, and and I think the reason why we would remain with the cloud provider is because. We, we are excited about the new technologies they're bringing. We're excited about the new features and the things that allow us to make more efficient. Um, what would make me less excited probably is if you feel that you're locked in into a cloud provider because you're using a service that is not available somewhere else and you've kind of built your product around a specific service. That's probably kind of the downside. But in general, I think for us, if we are happy with the ease of use, with the cost, and with the ability to service our customers' needs, I think that's probably what I'm looking for in, in, a, in a cloud provider. Thank you so much for sharing. I mean, I couldn't agree more. Having a good cloud provider can definitely help a business function so much more efficiently and faster and also reduce significant costs as well, as you mentioned. So I'm really glad that you're happy. But to round off with this interview, I wanted to ask you, what AWS technology are you using or do you plan to use in the near future that does make you excited, as you mentioned, and how do you feel that it will actually enhance your offering over at Secure Code Warrior? So I'm, I'm a little bit more further away from the technology than I was on day one. Um, I think on day one, I was still configuring machines in, uh, in, in EC2 and Elastic Load Balancer and using things like Route 53 myself and CloudFormation. I've, I've set it all up myself. Now I'm a little bit more away from that kind of technology, but one of the things that we've that, that I did do in the last two years was I didn't want to give endpoints on Windows or Mac to all my users. And I actually said to, to my to my staff, I say, hey, we're gonna we're gonna use the virtual workspaces, the virtual desktops of AWS. So when you when you need a Windows or when you need some kind of a programs, instead of kind of giving everybody a laptop that is uh, difficult to ship, difficult to maintain. Um, you need to patch it the whole time. You can't control it. You don't know if it's online or not. We've kind of said, hey, you know what? Let's let's go with in browser with Chrome, Chrome OS, and let's push everything to an AWS virtual workspace. So we control the desktop. We control the kind of endpoint where nowadays a lot of these attacks are kind of happening on endpoints, right? And uh, and by using like virtual desktops, it allows us to really control and monitor in a centralized place what's kind of happening. Um, now, the one that I'm most excited about is, uh, is uh, Amazon Code Guru because it's a little bit more close to uh, what we are doing. It is helping developers uh, building code faster and better. Uh, and I'm hoping at a certain point in time, security will become part of that Code Guru uh, offering as well. So that it's kind of becomes built in as a plugin or something that really that developers can use to write better code in the cloud um, with, uh, with kind of security built in. So that's the one that I'm really excited about as well. Peter, thank you so much for sharing all of this. I'm so excited to watch your journey and see you roll out some of our new technology. So thank you so much for joining me. And if anyone has any questions, please pop them in the comment section below and we will get back to you. Thanks so much, Peter. Thank you.